On this day, the 18th of February, 1478, the execution of George, Duke of Clarence. Born in Dublin on the 21st of October, 1449, George was the third of four sons to survive infancy, born to Richard, Duke of York, and Cecily Neville. He was between the future kings Edward IV and Richard III in age. He led a tumultuous life that was brought to an end on this day in 1478. As a child, George was close to Richard. The pair were only four years apart and grew up together with their older sister, Margaret. The rest of their siblings were a fair bit older than this trio. After the Battle of Ludford Bridge in 1459, George was taken into custody after he, Margaret, Richard and their mother Cecily were left to face the King's army when the Yorkist leaders fled in the night. When his father claimed the throne of England in 1460, he became Henry VI's heir. George went from state prisoner to fourth in line to the throne. In 1461, when he was just 12, George was sent across the Channel with his little brother Richard into exile in Utrecht. It was in response to the death of their father and older brother Edmund, Earl of Rutland, at the Battle of Wakefield on the 30th of December 1460. The boys would spend several months in limbo before returning to England as brothers of the new king, Edward IV. George was now heir to the Yorkist throne. He would remain Edward's heir for a decade and would probably never get over the promise of power that was always likely to be snatched away from him. When the Earl of Warwick rebelled against Edward, his initial plan was to replace the king with George, and he doubtless massaged the young duke's ego to encourage him to believe that he was entitled. George was married to Warwick's daughter Isabel as part of the plan, but when it failed, Warwick adjusted his aim to favour a restoration of the Lancastrian King Henry VI, which would see George relegated to being the heir to Henry's son if he should die childless. He was suddenly even more distant from the throne, not closer to it. This change in his prospects led to George's decision to rejoin his brothers and fight with Edward and Richard at Barnet and Tewkesbury in 1471. With Warwick's death at Barnet, his vast inheritance was up for grabs. As his son-in-law, George saw it as his route to serious power, but when Richard married Warwick's other daughter, Anne, it led to a bitter feud between the brothers over the division of the Warwick estates that rumbled on for years and almost broke out into open fighting in London. George continued to nurse his bruised ego throughout the 1470s. His behaviour became more and more overtly threatening to his brother's throne until Edward finally snapped. The catalyst was the arrest, interrogation and execution of one of George's servants. In May 1477, an astrologer named John Stacey was arrested for his part in an alleged plot to bring about the death of Richard Lord Beecham using sorcery at the request of Lord Beecham's adulterous wife. Stacey implicated Thomas Burdett, a member of George's household, and George arrived at a council meeting after the execution to complain. He had a well-known Lancastrian, Dr William Goddard, read Burdett's gallows statement to the council before condemning Edward's justice. It was a bit rich, given that George himself had just tried and executed one of his late wife's ladies-in-waiting for allegedly murdering her, effectively usurping royal authority. The Lancastrian connections of Dr Goddard were to become even more significant. George was arrested in June 1477 and thrown into the Tower. In January 1478, he was tried for treason before Parliament. The list of charges brought by Edward against his brother was long and shocking. Edward conducted the case himself and accused George of using sorcery to whip up opposition to him. The Duke was also accused of keeping an exemplification of the deal that made him heir to the House of Lancaster if their line failed, which of course it now had. George was also accused of conspiring to unseat Edward and ruin his family, a thinly veiled allusion to George's claims that Edward was illegitimate and so were his children. The King made it clear that his brother had been given numerous chances to reform but had proven himself to be incorrigible. The trial was a formality and George was found guilty. On this day, the 18th of February in 1478, George was executed in private. The method of his execution isn't known with any certainty, but stories soon sprang up that he had been allowed to select the method of his execution and had chosen to be drowned in a vat of Edward's favourite Malmsey wine. This isn't definite, but weight is added to it by the portrait of a lady believed to be his daughter, Margaret Countess of Salisbury. Around her wrist, she wears a charm that's clearly a barrel. Could this be a reference to her father's fate? George had two children. The youngest, Edward Earl of Warwick, was treated harshly by Edward, given his freedom and a future by Richard III, but then imprisoned by Henry VII until he was executed in 1499, aged 24. 
the eldest, Margaret, would be married to a cousin of Henry VII to negate her threat. She was restored to favour by Henry VIII and made Countess of Salisbury. She was close to Catherine of Aragon and to Princess Mary, which led her into suspicion as Henry sought to break with Rome. On the 27th of May, 1541, Margaret was executed at the age of 67 as Henry's suspicion of her and her children escalated beyond control. George must have feared for the fate of his children after he was convicted, but he can't have known the twists fate would have in store for them as he faced his execution, age 28, on this day in 1478.